Main event, Mark Briscoe versus Eddie Kingston for the Ring of Honor World title. This was great. This whole thing was great, but the thing that happened right before the match and the moments as soon as the match ended were the best part of the show. Well, of course, yes. The hype video they had with Jay Briscoe's voice literally in Mark Briscoe's head, I was choking up. It was beautiful. It was poignant. It was perfectly done. It was as good as the best WWE hype videos you've ever seen for a match. Absolutely grade A, stupendous, awesome, cinematic stuff. Putting over that this is the 11 year to the day, the 11 year anniversary yes. of Jay Briscoe beating Kevin Steen. That's right. To win his first Ring of Honor world title. I was at that show. Were you? I was in New York. Wow. Yeah. I was was I, I? There was a thousand things. It all runs together. Yeah, yeah. Can't remember. But uh, yeah, and that was because. At the time, as I recall, there was actually a big upset, and people were stunned that Jay Briscoe had won, but he did. So, I have one. I'm not even really a nitpick in this match. This is a dumb rule. If there's a chair in the ring, if you don't swing it at a guy, if you swing it at a guy, that's a DQ. But dropping him onto the chair, not a DQ. Nah, that's dumb. There are a lot. There are a lot of rules I hate way more than that one. Yeah. It's as we've learned recently. You ask the referees to show lenience. Yes, like yes, yeah. of course. So they had a great, great match. It, I do think it's, even this went too long. It was eleven thirty in Philadelphia by the time the show ended, and people were tired, and the show was long, and it would have been more effective about five minutes shorter. But almost immediately, Mark is. You know, what I think a problem with these uh, AW shows is they go too long. Well, Tony Khan is like an obsessive wrestling fan, and he never gets tired, and he never gets sick of wrestling. That is an excellent point. But like the rest of us do. Human beings, on the other we, hand. We get tired. <laughs> yes. uh, shows are too long. We get tired, and uh, and we want to go home. It's nothing personal against your show or the people on the show, but you know, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of shit to do, especially over Mania Weekend. A lot of people there had probably been to a million other shows. They're going to a million shows tomorrow and the next day. Just like, that's why I love Bloodsport. It was like, get in and get yes, out. Yes, don't waste my time. Just get in and get out. Don't need to put in time. So almost immediately, Mark is bleeding. He, uh, uh, he got dropped in the chair, and then he went outside, and Eddie slammed his head on the table about 15 times. And Mark came out just bleeding everywhere. You can see the blood flowing into his own eyes. Very brutal and violent, savage and wonderful. So he he sees his own blood and fires it up. But Eddie cut him off by punching him in the blood. Not even like working the cut. He's punching the actual blood itself. That's some of this hurt. Uh, so they're going back and forth. Mark gets the cactus elbow on the floor. What in the fuck was that giant red chunk that he landed on? Was that his flesh? I don't know what you're talking about, but it's entirely possible. He did the froggy elbow, mm -hmm. and he crashes on the floor, and there's like this red, like about this big around, this giant red like chunk. Hmm. And I'm like, where the fuck did that come from? I don't think that so. That is weird. I think I would have noticed a chunk of his head missing. But then they did something awesome. Okay. And that is everybody has stolen the 19 count from New Japan. Oh, yes. People are brawling on the floor. And then, you know, it's 17, 18, and then 19, they, everyone flies in, they break the count. So he does this, this uh, you know, this uh, whatever, and he gave him an exploder off the apron to the floor. Yes, yes. Fucking brutal. He's down there next to a chunk of his flesh, and the ref's counting. 14, 15, Eddie Kingston flies in the ring. The ref goes, 16. Jay Briscoe gets to his feet. Everyone's like, ah, oh, we know this spot. Ref goes, 17, and Briscoe collapses. And the crowd goes, ah! They totally bought it. Like, oh my yeah. God, he ain't going to make it. He took that exploder and he's dead. But 18, 19, he jumps up and he flew in. It was so well done. Think about this. To do that on the way in, but collapse at 17. They totally. Totally bought it. They absolutely bought it. They thought the main event of this show was going to end when Mark Briscoe got counted out. Yeah. Mark Briscoe, on the 11-year anniversary yes. of his deceased brother winning the Ring of Honor, they thought he was going to lose via count out. That's astonishing. Yeah. Best but they pulled it off. Best count out tees I've seen in years. Someone here, they're trading suplexes. 
And Eddie hits a Uranagi. And Ian Ricky Bunny shouts, Uranagi! <laughs> and Caprice Coleman says, What do you call me? Oh my God. <laughs> Tremendous. Tremendous. I'm a huge fan of uh His commentary of Caprice. Rules. Yes, yes, he's yeah, amazing. Yeah. So uh we had uh uh Mark calling for the J driller but unable to hit it. Eddie gets the back fist for a near fall, tries the second one, eventually finally gets a second back fist, then a jumping kick and sort of a cutthroat driver. Actually, that was Mark, wasn't it? Yeah. Mark ate the second back fist, came back with a jumping kick, hit kind of a cutthroat driver, more like an angle slam, and the answer was like, well, he dropped on his back, still hurts. And then the only conceivable finish oh, happens. Yeah. Mark points to his family in the crowd. He reaches for the sky. Boy. and points to, We didn't even mention, by the way, Mark coming out to give me back my bullets. Yeah. It was the Briscoe freaking brothers here, man. Start to finish. Points to his family. Points to Jay. Calls Jay Driller. And he hooks Eddie Kingston's arms and lifts him <laughs> up into the air and drops him directly onto his head. Oh, my God. Do you remember... That was a driller, all right. Do you remember when... Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker had their WrestleMania match, and a lot of people were taken out of the match because they were so concerned yes. Undertaker had died. Yeah. That's how I felt. Like, when he gets the pin, obviously, but I didn't care about Mark winning because I was worried Eddie Kingston may actually be deceased. Well, Eddie was fine. Good. Yeah. I'm very happy about this. Now, I say that, but five seconds later, when Mark rolls over, and he's looking not quite right at the camera, but towards the camera. Blood just everywhere. No teeth anywhere. And a huge smile breaks out. Ah! Oh, awesome. Warm and glowing and chilled. Papa and Briscoe is the ring. Streamers fill the ring. Mama Briscoe's there. The kids are in the ring. Chris Daniels, Jay Lethal, Rhett Titus, the kids, Cabana, all these old Daniels. school ROH yes. guys. And then Mark and Eddie hugged. I thought this was great. Oh, it was beautiful. It the, was the, great. The, 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 pre, the pre-match and post-match was the best part of this, but the match was also very, very good. Yes. Albeit a little long. But yes, I mean, clearly, the Briscoes, and Mark Briscoe in particular, are just absolutely beloved by this locker room. Yes. This this meant a lot to everyone. Not just... This is not a, a charity event or a charity title win. This was what people wanted to see, but it was also... As trite and uh, cliche to the sound, Mark did deserve this. Yeah, and he should have won it a long time ago. He should have won this a long time ago. Yes. He has been part of Ring of Honor since day one at Murphy Rec. Been part of the show forever. And uh, he's, he's the man. And he's still having great matches. And uh, he's going to have a lot more great matches in 2024. And uh show ended on a positive note, that's for sure. It did. It ended on a positive note. I mean, my only real big complaint, besides all the counters... Was uh, you know, the show's long, just too long. I mean, it's long enough that I I, I couldn't even finish all of it. Like I, I had so much stuff I had to do today, stuff I had to watch, shows I had to do. You know, by the time I got started with it, just I uh, missed portions of it, and I still watched hours. <laughs> I missed ninety minutes, and I watched hours of Ring of Honor. Yeah. And listen, here's the thing, everybody. This is not like tribalism, aw bullshit. So the SmackDown show. I'm gonna quickly run down SmackDown here. I watch the show every week. You don't. If you want to throw anything in, you're welcome to. But uh, what I want to start off with is uh, this was a SmackDown that was followed by the Hall of Fame. Paul Heyman going to the Hall of Fame. And, uh, you know, Rock was out there to do an induction at the end. And this is not coming from fans, okay? This is from people in WWE. SmackDown ended... And people started filing out. And it got to the point where that SmackDown was packed. And they had so many people filing out during the Hall of Fame that they had to t- first turn the lights down. And then they had to send whoever out. I don't even know who it was. I haven't seen it yet. To, like, alert the fans. The Rock will be here later tonight. Doing anything to get people to stay. And I was told that over the course of, of the Hall of Fame... Like 60% of that crowd, they were out of there. So if there were 15,000 people, I mean, we're talking there were like 5,500 left at the end. There's like thousands and thousands and thousands of people got out of there because it's a long fucking weekend. And everybody knows we got 
at least you're going to be at WrestleMania tomorrow for seven hours, okay? If the show's four and a half hours, you've still got to be there early. you got to watch the pre-show, like everything. You'll be there for seven hours. You're going to be there seven hours Sunday. It's, it's too much. And I think that, like, a lot of the shows, one of the good things about Mania Weekend with all of the indie shows is, like, a lot of them all run in the same building. That's true. And so you get two hours, and you're out of there. You cannot go long. Do your two-hour show and get the fuck out because the next show's coming in. That's great. So, uh, yeah, I think they're, they're – I don't know if it's, like, anything official, but, I mean, people were certainly talking, like, SmackDown may need to be, like, in another building or, you know, just do three. Just have three people go in next year, SmackDown, and then three people. But, you know, the thing they did this year was too long. So much about – Rock this week, so I decided a good match for Rock would be uh, Cold Stone. Strap him on corner post must have done damage. Then Stone Cold kicked the Rock out of the ring. Shane Shane was rooting for Rock. A closed line while down. Rock put his arm out across Stone Cold. It was just a massive infusion. Stone Cold won the match. Cool. Can you verify we did not use AI to replace Granny? (laughs) Yeah. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the Join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click Join today and don't miss out.